begin to sing and give praise. The Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. I come to tell you today that there is something that happens when you praise. There's something that happens when you, when you shout. There's something that happens when you sing a song to the Lord. These people were on their way to a war and they put the praises in front of the army. Your praise is stronger than any weapon. Your praise is stronger than any fist. Your praise is stronger than any, any natural thing. They put the praises in the beginning, in the in the front of the army, and the armies that were against them began to fight amongst each other. Yes. That is such a blessing. That blessed me so good. In this season, there are so many people that are in war. We are literally in a war. In this season, God is literally saying, pick a side. Either you're going to be on the side of God or the side of the devil, and you literally feel at war with your spiritual self and your flesh because your spiritual is trying to overtake your flesh. But I come to tell you today, if you would just put a praise on it, that your spiritual man is going to overcome your flesh every time. If you would just put a praise on it, your spiritual self is going to outdo any mental illness every time. If you would just put a praise on it, things in your life would just have to work together because there's something that happens when you put a praise on it. Does anyone have a praise today? Are you expecting anything today? There's some times in my life when I, when everything looked bad, but I put a praise on it anyways. I dare you to praise them in advance for what you're expecting in this season. I dare you to praise them in advance for what he's already told you he's going to do. I dare you to praise them in advance for things that you don't even know about. If the Bible says he does things seen and unseen. There's some things you don't even know about that God's doing for you. I dare you to praise them. Hey, God. I, that I have seen in my life the power of praise and worship. There is so much power with praise and worship. Because of their praise, they're, they're, they literally no longer had enemies. Their praise put their enemies against each other, and they not only won, but their enemies defeated each other. When you begin to praise, your enemies will fight each other. When you begin to praise, what the devil expected to work out against you will start to begin to work for you. When you begin to praise, your demons will begin to line things up for you. I'm just telling you what I know. It's biblical. It's biblical. I'm not just telling you my life. This is biblical. Your praise is working for you in this season. Just put a praise on it. Just put a praise. Hey, just put a praise on it. Just put a praise on it. I, I, I will literally challenge myself every day to just put a praise on it. I don't care what it looks like. I'm just going to put a praise on it. You got to have that in your spirit. I can't worry about what's going on. I can't worry about saying being busy because I know when I put a praise on it that something has to work out. When I put a praise on it that, that God has to show up. Ooh, glory. Ooh, let me calm down. Let me yeah, calm hallelujah. down. Hallelujah. Let me calm. Yes, if you knew the power of praise, hallelujah. if you knew the power of praise, you wouldn't be fighting the things that you're fighting. Yeah. If you knew the power of praise, you wouldn't have to keep battling the same issues. Amen. If you knew the power of Amen. praise. Amen. Amen. God is saying today, get your praise back, people of God. Amen. Get your praise back. You can't worry about everything going on around you. Get your praise back. Okay. Okay. Ooh, so that's my, my short word for today. Just get your praise back. Just praise them anyways. Just shout anyways. Hey. Man. I'm going to pray, and then we are going to get uh, this word from Providence Julia. So dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us another day, oh God. We thank you, Lord, that you woke us up this morning, Father God. We thank you, Jesus, because somebody woke up today with sickness in, our in their body, oh God. But we woke up whole and healthy, oh God. We thank you, Jesus, because someone woke up this morning and couldn't get out of bed, oh God. But both of our legs walked, Father God. Both of our feet moved, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that somebody woke up this morning and couldn't control their mind, oh God. But we thank you, Lord, that you are a mind regulator, oh God. 
that you have given us peace, oh God. We thank you, Jesus, that somebody woke up this morning with bitterness in their heart, oh God, but that you have fixed our heart, Father God, that you have showed us to be our heart fixer, oh God. We thank you, Jesus, that when the devil comes in like a flood, that you raise up a standard, oh God. We thank you, Jesus, that our praise will knock down anything that the devil sets before us, oh God. We thank you, Jesus, that you do work in our life, Father God, that you do send your angels, oh God, that we don't have to go through life by ourselves, Father God. But the Bible says, if God be for us, he's greater than the whole wide world against us, oh God. So I thank you, Jesus, that you've given me the confidence that if the whole wide world's against me, I still already got the victory because you already won it a hundred and hundred of years ago, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that tonight I have victory, oh God. Oh, Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that you are the undefeated champion, oh God. I thank you, Jesus, that angels bow before you, oh God. I thank you, Lord, that, the, that you birthed obedience in us, oh God, to bow before you, oh God, to lay our problems down at your feet, oh God, to lay everything down at your feet, oh God, to worship you at all times, oh God. Yes, God. Oh, Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for the strengthening of our faith, oh God. Oh, yes, God. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, oh God. God. Yeah. I thank you, Jesus, that you just strengthened our faith that much, oh God, that we can walk through the midst of all kinds of trouble and just be oh, have a sound God. mind, oh God. Yes, we thank Lord. you, Jesus, for your love today, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus, we thank you for your joy that surpasses you, all understanding, oh yes. God. We thank you, Jesus, for your peace, Lord. Yes, God. Oh, Jesus, we thank you, God. Thank we thank you, you for the blood today, oh God. Oh, yeah. It covers a multitude of sin, oh God. Oh, hey, God, shut that up.
be all right. We just got to hold on in this season. There's so much going on right now in our city. I don't know where you're watching from, but in our city, there's just a lot of evil. And we're breaking it down wrong. We're breaking it down black and white. My Lord! And it's not black and white. It's evil rampant in the land. Amen. We're blaming it on black and white. We blame it on people. My Lord! And the devil is loving it. He is loving it because we fighting each other. He's like, now nah, I ain't got to do their work. My Lord, I don't got to do my work. They doing my work. They cussing each other out. They turn up places. My Lord, this is not the will of God. At some point, you got to pick a side. This morning, the Lord was speaking to me, and he said, tell my people, you getting too mad. You getting too mad. When I said, vengeance is mine. My Lord, he said you're getting too mad in the flesh. Yeah. I've given you a way to fight. I said pray for those that persecute you. Yeah. We're, 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 I have not seen anybody praying for the people. I see us posting videos of looting. I see us cussing. I see us backbiting. I see us trying to get people to lose their job. He said pray for those that persecute you. My God, this is grown-up Christianity, people of God. This is grown-up Christianity. We do not win evil with evil. Amen. We don't win evil with evil. The Bible says you overcome evil with good. Amen. It's the word of the Lord. Amen. I know it's a hard pill to swallow. I know it's people losing their lives. I'm not trying to be insensitive. But God said we're being too mad in the wrong way, in the wrong fashion, in the wrong manner. Vengeance is mine. Vengeance is mine. Vengeance is mine. Thus said the Lord. We don't get to take it into our own hands. The devil is loving that people are taking it into their own hands. Because yeah, yeah. he's, the, he's the accuser of the brethren. My God. He's going to come back and he's going to be able to say, when the Lord, when you're standing up on Sunday, blessing God, your hands are lifted in the sanctuary, the devil's going to be like, that was the same one that was over a cup. Mm. That was the same one that was saying, let's kill the police. That was the same one spray painting buildings. My God. This is not righteous. It's not righteous. God sees all, and he knows all. And I've heard people say, oh, what if it's your son? God sees all, and he knows all. My God, at some point, you got to get firm in your faith. Some of us are not going to leave this earth in a beautiful manner. Just is what it is. Jesus died a gruesome, bloody death on a cross. He knew no sin. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We don't get to choose our exit. Make sure your soul is saved. This is not the season to be out rioting and looting and doing all this crazy stuff. This is not the season. We need to be saving souls. Like never before, because the enemy is running rampant. I'm not going to be afraid in my own skin. We cannot be afraid. Because just like the same word with Corona, the Lord said you can't preserve your own life. You cannot preserve, whichever way he allows. <laughs> We are forgetting that God is in control. We see something happening. We're like, oh, God ain't in control. We got to take it to our own hands. We got to go do all this other stuff. Wait a minute. The Bible says be sober-minded. We're not sober-minded. We can't think clearly. We cannot hear from God on a matter because we're so full of rage. God sees all. And he knows all. And he knows all. We acting like God ain't seeing it. We acting like, and the, and the parents will say, but that was my baby. You know, God don't know how I feel. His baby went up on a whole 
house. His baby knew no sin. His hands was clean. His heart was pure. And he died a gruesome death. John the Baptist spread the gospel, lived so peculiar that people were like, what, he's wearing camel's hair, eating locusts and honey, just where he's strange. People talked about him. They didn't listen to the message of repentance. He lived a sold out life for God. Lord. And he died a gruesome death. He was beheaded. In prison, waiting on Jesus to come and rescue him. This thing is real. We're too focused on how we go instead of where we're going. I don't care if I die a gruesome death or a pretty death or whichever way, baby, if my soul is saved. The Lord said, don't free man. Because he can only hurt the body. My God. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, if they souls was saved, man can only hurt the body. He said, be afraid, be afraid of God. Be afraid of me because I can hurt the body and throw the soul in hell. Yeah, yeah. But we looking at this thing wrong. We got to hold on to our faith in this season. Amen. If God be for me. You gotta get that stuff, baby. I'm not worried about it because it's things is getting ready to get worse. It's not getting ready to get better. We have the end times. People trying to ride right and uh, protest, they will lose their jobs and all this stuff. That's not getting it. We cannot do it that way. God has given us a strategic plan. He's given us the whole Bible. If you read it, you will know these things are coming. Lord. It should not make us hungry for blood, for vengeance, but I'm hungry for souls. Who else want to get saved today? Me. My Lord. We got to be out here saving souls, spreading the gospel, making sure people are healed, set free, delivered, washed. Come on in the room. Don't come down from your post in this season. God has put his, his front line workers. He gave you a high call. He put you on the front line. He gave you authority. He gave you dominion in the earth. He gave you influence amongst people. Not to sit around and be like, girl, that is just so sad. I just can't even believe it. I just, that's just the worst thing that ever happened. Black lives matter. All souls matter. We're separating this thing wrong. God is not for division. We are the body of Christ. Black, white, yellow, orange, green, purple, blue. Whatever color, whatever nationality. Yes. Yes. It's not about black and white. We got black people that do evil things and black people that do good things. We got white people that do evil things. We got white people that do good things. This is not black and white, people. It's souls. It's souls. It's your soul say evil people that are influenced by the devil yes. will do evil things that are demonic. It's not good and easy to watch. I get it. It's not good and easy to watch. But we still have to do the work of the Lord. We still have to be committed. We still have to be faithful. We still have to be dedicated. We have to say, God, I don't understand this right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't like it and it does not feel good to me. But you said all things all things. work. All things. Together. <clears throat> but my good. My Lord, I don't know how this gruesome death is working, but you said all things. together for my good. At some point, you have to start really believing the Bible that you read. At some point. Because if not, we just send all these scriptures. I will bless 
the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. How you gonna have praise and cussing? Come on! His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Lord, we thank you for this word on tonight, oh great God. Lord, we call you mighty. Ooh, we call you king of kings. You sit high, Lord, and you look low, God. You know all things, God. You see all things, God. You judge all things, God. We call you righteous. We call you the judge, the great defender. The great deliverer, God. Lord, we honor you on tonight, Father. We bless your holy name, oh great God. We love you on tonight, God. We may not understand, but we come tonight, God. Leaning not on our own understanding, God. But we come acknowledging you in all of your ways, God. We come to hear a word tonight, God. So much is going on in the land. We come for our strategy tonight, God. Ha! Because the world has its strategy. The world has its way of handling things, God. But we are kingdom people. We are royalty, God. We are the royal priesthood. We are the royal nation. We are the peculiar people. We are the holy people of God. We are the righteous people of God. We are the set apart, the called out ones. Hey, God, the sick ones, God. We come tonight for instructions. Lord, we honor you in this place, oh great God. We ask that you be with the families that have lost loved ones in this season, oh great God. We believe and we know without a shadow of a doubt, Lord, that you said vengeance is yours and it shall be because you are not a man that you shall lie, nor the son of man that you shall repent. If you said it, it is so. We can rest in your word, in your peace, in your promises, oh great God. We cancel every spirit of fear tonight. Every spirit of worry on tonight, God. We will not be afraid as the people of God. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me. We shall not fear evil in this season, oh great God. We shall stand firm on our faith, oh great God. Believing and knowing that angels walk with us, oh great God. That everywhere that our feet shall tread shall be called holy ground. And the problem is that so many people are afraid. They ain't claiming territory with their feet, my God. <laughs> We come tonight for strength, oh Lord. We come tonight for courage tonight, God. Yeah, yeah. To do what you called us to do, God. To walk the way you called us to walk. To say what you tell us to say in this season, God. Because tomorrow, it ain't promised. We got to stop living like tomorrow's promised. Lord, we bless your name tonight, God. For you are worthy. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, Lord. And you're perfect. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah and amen. Amen. Thank you, God. You are perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways, Daddy. You're perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You're perfect in all of your ways. 
tears. He's perfect in all of his ways to us. He's a good, good father. And I'm loved by you. I need y'all to sing that because I don't know if we get that. He's a good, good father. <coughs> and put your hands on your heart. And I'm loved by you. Oh, thank you, Lord. And I'm loved by you. Oh, you got to really understand it. And I'm loved by you. Yes, oh, great God. And I'm loved by you. Woo, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm loved by you. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, God. And I'm loved by you. The Bible says perfect love casts out all fear. The problem is we're not understanding that it's love. We're not accepting that his love is perfect. Because when I truly know that his love is perfect, I don't have to be afraid. Amen. I don't have to be afraid to send my son out to the streets. I don't have to be afraid to go to the grocery store. I don't have to be afraid in my own home. Amen. My God, I don't have to be afraid in my own mind. Come on in the room. I don't have to be afraid of the decisions that he has put before me because he's perfect in oh. all of his ways. He sees all, he knows all, and the devil has to get permission. We acting like God is somebody that just snuck one. The devil just snuck one in on God. Come on. He's still God. My Lord. He's still God. He said, don't get that angry like I'm not, I'm not hurt, like I'm not God, my Lord. It reminds me when somebody comes in the salon and their hair is a mess. And they're like, girl, it's just, oh my God, it's such a mess. Girl. And they just be in a whole panic attack. And I'm like, girl, it's nothing. I got this. You at the right place at the right time. That's what God is saying in this season. I got this. I got this. I got this. You know how when we back used to be out in the streets and our friends something happened to our friends, we're like, bro, we got the right. Yeah. We was at one. God's bigger, y'all. He said, I'm, I'm at one. Oh, I got this. Okay. He got this. He got this. He sees all and he knows all. Let's go to Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59 tonight. We're going to pick up where we left off last week. Because we're trying to figure out what's going on in the world. The only way to figure that out is through the word of God. Isaiah 59 and 1 says, listen, because you're not listening. If you got to start out with listen, you ain't listening. Help us, God. Listen. You know they say that. What's that? Listen, let me listen. Just listen. Listen. The Lord's arm is not too weak to save you. I, I could really be just be done right there. Come on. Come on. I could really just be done right there. The Lord's arm is not too weak to save you, nor his ear to death to hear you call. My Lord. Come on. My God. So see, we got to, okay, all right, Lord, so keep speaking to us. Because we got a lot of people that are crying out to God in this season. I heard somebody say, uh, we were talking about, one of my clients, we were talking about um, Corona and being afraid and closing your church doors and all that. And I said, girl, I really believe Psalms 91. Like, I literally do. It can't come across this threshold. My God, I just believe because that's what the Lord told me. He said, I'm covered in this season. So if I'm covered, why am I going to walk around scared? Come on in the room. Everywhere that my feet shall tread shall be called holy ground. He, she said, well, some people had open day church and they still got Corona. I said, and he's still a healer. Come on in the room. Yeah. He really is. But let's read the word of God. Verse 1. Listen, the Lord's arm is not too weak to save you, nor his ear too deaf to hear you call. It's your sins that have cut you off from God. My Lord, but God, I've been 
praying, but you still shacking. My God. I've been fasting, Lord. Come on, and, Lord, I pay my tithes. Lord, but you still, your hands are dirty. Jesus. And your heart is not pure. This is the state of the world. This is the state of the world that we live in. Because your sin, because of your sins, he has turned away and will not listen anymore. My God. There comes a time when God is tired. We, we, we're in a season right now. We, you know, it's like somebody keep calling you over and over and over. You're like, no, I ain't even got, I ain't even gonna be able to do it. We cry now for God. We cry now for solutions, but we will not submit our all to God. We go in the church. But we're not turning from our wicked ways. I said this last week. The Lord has given us this season to truly repent and get saved for real. Godly. How long will we play with God? This is serious. Jesus. We believe that heaven is real. Everybody believes heaven. Oh, they're in a better place. But did you see how they died? Now stop it. Everybody believes that heaven is real. But I'm convinced that we actually don't believe hell is real. How do I know? Because we live the way we live. I'm trying to tell you my testimony. When I realized I wasn't going to hell, to heaven, there was nothing on this earth that sounded fun that the Lord said come away from. Call turkey. I can't do that. I'm going to hell for that. Let me go on. We have to literally believe that hell is real. And if we truly believe it, our lifestyle will line up. We don't believe. I pray that God gives revelation. Amen. I pray that he gives revelation to any of his children that are down here. I pray that he gives you a dream. Amen. I pray that he takes you to the depths of hell and lets you see it. Tomorrow is not promised, people of God. Choose this day. Whom you will Serve. Choose this day. Amen. Michelle, bring me a chair and sit it right here and one sit it right here for me, please. We plan, and God has given us time to repent. Amen. Choose this day whom you will serve. One on this side and one on that side. Thank you. This is what it looks like. This is one of my favorite lessons when I'm, when I'm uh, doing counseling and I got somebody struggling and they haven't made a decision. When they come in, I got two chairs and I make sure that they're not close by each other. And I say, sit in both chairs at the same time. Well, that's what it looks like. When you're trying to serve to master. You can't serve two masters. Choose this day. Lord. Whom you will serve and have a seat. My God, have a seat. Quit getting up. Have a seat. Your soul is too important to keep playing. My God, there's nothing in the earth worth going to hell over. It ain't that good. It's not that great. I don't care about no soul ties. I don't care about no generational curses. Choose this day whom you will serve. We get ready to go to Galatians. This is the scripture I got saved from. For real. Because I was born in that old church door. And you know what's so funny? I'm like, God, I'm tired of preaching the same message. Every week I feel like I'm still, keep coming back. He said, because they still Lord. don't get it. My Lord. My Lord. He said, they still don't get it. I remember my preacher preached the same message for six months. And I went home and I was like, Lord, I ain't about to go back to church next week. Because he ain't doing no preaching the same sermon. Oh. And the Lord said, and you still don't have it. My Lord, help us. Galatians 5 and 19. 
when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, when you follow what your flesh wants to do, my God, these are the results. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, arguing, jealousy, outbursts of anger. Let's stop right there. Woo. Let's stop right there. Outbursts of anger. If you think it, if you think God is pleased with the way that these situations are being handled in an angry manner, outbursts of anger. It's, it's in the book. Selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like this. Let me tell you again, as I have before, anyone. I don't care about your title. My Lord, that's what the Lord said. I don't care about your mantle. I don't care about your assignment. Anyone. I don't care about your gift. I don't care about your talent. Anyone living this sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. When I read that, I got saved for real, y'all. Right on my floor in Florida. I said, God save me today. I'm going to hell over some pleasure. It ain't that good. It ain't that good. Come on. No. It ain't that good. Save me today, God. Yes. Cause if I go to sleep and I don't wake up, see, we so worried about dying. I, I just, I'm so confused. We just so worried about preserving our life, baby. I don't care about it. just as long as when I do go. Come on. Let's make sure when we do go yes. that our soul is. The Bible says make your salvation sure. Yes. Not make your salvation uh, Sunday I'm here but Friday girl I'm back over here. You cannot be playing musical chairs with your salvation people of God. That is scary to me. Choose this day whom you will serve. Isaiah 59 and 3 Your hands are the hands of murderers. Your fingers are filthy with sin. Your lips are full of lies and your mouth spews corruption. Everything that come out of your mouth. This is the state of the world. We act so surprised. It's in the Bible. We act so shy. I just cannot believe. It. You see he's doing that? He's on national TV talking about that. And they doing that, doing that. It's it's in the this is what people do that don't love God. Come on. This is what people do that are not submitted to God. This is what unbelievers do. Why are you surprised? This is what people that are full of the devil do. Come on. You cannot be offended. It's in the book. Verse 4. No one cares about being fair or honest. The people's lawsuits are based on lies. They conceive evil deeds and then give birth to sin. My Lord. They sit up and plot a plan, strategize a plan around the table. They, they sit up plotting how they about to do this, that, and the third. They don't call the whole meeting. We got more people meeting for evil than we do for, for God. We about to go to the club tonight, girl, and turn up, turn up. But you were like, girl, come to church with me tonight. Friday night, make no miss you. Girl, come to church. You know, I would. I'm going next week. I got you. I'll be there next week. Come on. Next week ain't promised, baby. Next week ain't promised. My God. The Bible says, the day you hear my, my voice, harden not your heart. When you harden your heart, you say, next week, I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to do it this last time. My God. I heard a lady preaching one time, and it disturbed me, and I was freshly saved. And she said she was talking about how she had been sleeping with a married man and how she had told God that she was going to stop. She said, but the Lord told her right while she was in the bed with this man, I'm going to, you know, you need to stop. The Lord told her to stop. He said, stop. And she said, I rolled over and I told him, we're going to go one more time. That is not. That is not, I just was so, I, I, I was, I, that, has, that testimony has never left me because as she was standing there speaking, she was standing there bold and she was telling about all the illnesses that she had. And something in my spirit said, if you would have stopped 
almost break my little heart. They don't know what it means. Peace, I roll that up. Peace, I pop a bottle. Peace, I pop a pill. What you mean? Just peace that surpasses us. They don't understand it. They don't know what it means to do good or to be just. They have mapped out crooked roads. And no one who follows them knows a moment's peace. See, see, we as believers, when we haven't really made up our mind, we follow their crooked road maps. We let them tell us what to do. My Lord, we let them lead the way. They call the shots for us. What? Shouty, come through. Okay, I just gotta drop off the baby. <laughs> Help us. And then we wonder why we can't get no peace. We out here making babies out of the will of God. Then it's hard raising them. You're stressed out. You about to pull your hair out on both sides. You done turn gray before the baby's three come on in the room. The baby, honey, my baby daddy is not helping me. He done gone on with somebody else. And you got all this to holler. Baby, you went down that map. You followed that and you, and you know not a moment's peace. My God. Sin has its own consequences. When I think about that, you ain't got to punish no bad. Lord. Listen, we think we can punish people good. We cannot punish people good the way God can. Come on. Mm, mm, mm. You'd rather have men punish you for God to have to be on long it. You do not want it. My Lord. Verse 9, there is no justice amongst us, and we know nothing about right living. For we look for light, but we only find darkness. Jesus. Mm. I was talking to some girls and they were talking about relationships. I'm going to find me a good man this time. Girl, outside of the wheel, you're not going to never find no good man. I just want you to know it. And I don't care if he go to church, baby, because that ain't no good man just because he go to church. The Bible says if a good man steps, I ordered. They're not going to order me to the bedroom. I'm just trying to tell you the word of the Lord. A good man steps are ordered by the Lord. If he's not in the will of God, matter of fact, let me go back. Skiri, skiri, skiri. If you're not in the will of God, you will only attract where you are in life. He, he, he calling you because you ain't godly. That's why he calling you. Because he ain't either. He got a form of godliness. But he's denying the power that can make him holy. Make him righteous. My God. And even in that, choose this day. Baby, if you ain't on this side all the way, I can't do nothing with you. Choose this day. See, you can truly feel and understand when a person's been pressed out. When they truly been purged and purified, I'm not about, ain't nobody about to just boo boo and right, right, and not about to run up on me. Because first of all, they're going to be uncomfortable. She keeps talking about God. That's all I mean. You know, I listened the first time. Dang. But she keeps, that's all she's talking about is God. Well, that's what she just keeps. I mean, it's midnight. She's still talking about God. I mean, we've been on the phone since 10. I was trying to let it run out the course, but come on. Lord. The oil on your life. Lord. I don't got to tell people to get out of my face and get out of my life. They need the oil on my life. Come on. Yeah. 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 They stop calling for themselves. Come on. It's real. You ain't got to tell people when you don't, when you have truly purified, you let the Lord purify you, wash you, and cleanse you. And because I went through that purging process, when you really went through, you know what you had to go through to get delivered. I'm not about to let you run up on me and take me back. My God, you don't know how many times I had to fast. You don't know how much praying I had to do, how much pressing, how I almost lost See, this is how I know. Preach. This is how you know. If you truly have been processed, you're not about to let any kind of man or any kind of woman run up on you. Because you know what you had to go through. I'm not about to let you take me back. My grandma used to say, you don't need nobody to take me down here. My Lord. 
If we ain't going up, we ain't going down. We ain't going down. It's the word of the Lord. Verse 9. There is no justice amongst us, and we know nothing about right living, for we for we we look for light, but find only darkness. We look for bright skies, but walk in gloom. We grope like the blind along the wall, filling our way like people without eyes. We just try and stuff. We just we just try and stuff. We're just trying it. I mean, I don't really know. Even though they, you know, at the church, they told me the right way, but that's too, they doing too much. It don't take all that. You know, I'm just trying. I still want to keep all my old friends. So, you know, I'm just trying. I mean, there's a way I can keep them and still love God. You know, I'm, even though they told me, you know, I got to change my friend circle if I want to do something different, but I'm just feeling my way. My Lord. Jesus help. My God. Yes, you have to change your friend circle. Because your whole friend circle supports your dysfunction or they wouldn't be your friend. Wow. My God. I don't care if y'all go to church together. Y'all a whole group of religious, <coughs> church-going, unsaved people. My God. Because in real law, my God, you ain't going to be comfortable if you ain't truly submitted. Choose this day. Pick a side. Cause this thing is real. And as I'm, as I'm reading this, let me go down one more verse. Even at brightest noon, we stumble as though, as, as though it were dark. Among the living, we are like the dead. We growl like hungry bears and moan like mournful doves. We look for justice, but it never comes. Mm. My Lord. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Whoo! We look for rescue, but it is far from us. Jesus. Whoo! Yeah. where we at. Okay. This is where we at. Verse 12, it just knocked me off my feet. For our sins are piling up before God. And they testify against us. Our sins are piling up every time you keep doing it. Every time, every time, every time, every time, every time, every time. Every time. Our sins are piling up before God. Individually, person to person, and also as the body of Christ, as the bride. We are faithful. We not committed. We not loyal. We are more loyal and committed to our job than we are to God. They tell us to be there on time. We on time. They tell us to wear a certain uniform. We wear it. They tell us how to do our hair. We do it. We tell us how long. They tell us how long to be on break. We do it. But when it comes to the things of God, because there's no time clock that you can see, that you can see, that you can see, we call it optional. We say I don't take on My God. Somebody trying to give you instruction that you know they've been pressed down. But you can't listen. It don't take all that. I'm going to take a little of what she said and a little of what he said. And I'm still going to do a lot of what I'm trying to do. Help us. Our sins are piling up before God. And they testify against us. My God, in the courtroom of heaven, our sins are going to testify against us. Right here on earth, our sins are going to testify against us. God sees us and knows us. And he knows us. 
Okay, so we outraged right now. We outraged because one of our brothers died and it was gruesome and it was sin, right? Are you as outraged about your own sin? Because no sin is greater. Same way it looked to you. The same way it looked to God. Come on, help. The same way it looked to God. Help us. When you do it. Oh, but I ain't kill nobody in cold blood. But you fornicating. But you lying. But you backbiting. But you cheating. But you stealing. You don't want to pay your tithes. You can't come to church. You won't use your gifts. My God, it looks the same. Come on, help. Jesus. Our sins are piling up against us. They're piling up before God against us, and they're testifying. Verse 13. We know we have rebelled and have denied God. We have turned our backs on our God. And you know, a lot of times we'll say, I don't, I don't deny God. I mean, I share scriptures and all that stuff. You deny him how you live. Mm -hmm. Not with your words, Come on. with your lifestyle choices. We know how unfair and oppressed we have been carefully planning our deceitful lives. Our courts oppose the righteous and justice is found nowhere. Truth stumbles in the street and honesty has always been outlawed. Get mad because somebody's telling you the truth. Get offended. Who she thinks she is? Who he think he is? Honey, what is she? Girl, do you know what she used to do? Get the used to do though. Make, make sure you got that part. Uh. Get the used to do. I'm trying to get you to the used to do. Welcome to the used to do club. I'm trying to welcome you there, but you ain't got it. I want you to be in the used to do club. Come on in the room. Honesty has been outlawed. What they say, snitches get stitches? Yep. It's real. You can't even tell the truth. The people are scared to tell the truth. But we spread a whole lot of dumb stuff. <laughs> Foolishness. Ignorance on the phone for hours, keep keying. Girl, that was just honey. <laughs> girl, that's so funny, girl. Girl, get off the phone and tend to your child. She can't even read. She said. Mm. <laughs> it's real. Verse 15. Yes, truth is gone. And anyone who renounces evil is attacked. So, so this message is not going to be popular. We want to hear, uh, we want the Malcolm message. I, all I got is Martin. Peace. <coughs> Peace. Because it looks the same to God. It looks the same. Let's, let's hold that image in our mind. And just like it broke your heart to watch it, it looks the same to God when you sin. When you didn't do what is not right before the Lord, the Lord looked and was displeased to find there was no justice. He was amazed to see that no one intervened to help the oppressed. Look, here go the good part, y'all. Here go the good part. I love the word of God. It blesses me so much. Woo! You ain't got to fight your own battle is what I need you to know. Come on. So he himself... Stepped in to save them with his strong arm. Huh? Yeah. Okay. He stepped in to save them with his strong arm. And his justice sustained him. He put on righteousness as body armor. Woo, baby. He put on righteousness. Just as we're supposed to do. It's not about putting on a vest, having a nine on your hip and an AK-47 in a trunk and more cuss words in a little bit. He put on righteousness. Woo! As body armor. That is so good to me, y'all. I'm just trying to tell you. Put on righteousness to protect you in this season. I will do the right thing at all times, in season, out of season, when they can see me and when they can't see me. My Lord, behind closed doors and in front of them, put on righteousness.
righteousness as body armor. I will pray for those that are persecuting me. Put on righteousness. When Jesus was up on that cross, dying a bloody death, what did he say? He didn't say blah, blah, blah. He said, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Put on righteousness, forgiveness as body armor. It'll protect your heart. He placed the helmet of salvation on his head. My Lord! Saving grace. I love the word of the Lord. All we got to do is go to the word. It will soothe you. He clothed himself with a robe of vengeance. Woo, listen, baby. Woo, I promise I wash my hands when people do me wrong because the Lord, he done put up, you, you done made him put on his robe of vengeance. My God. Jesus. He put on a robe of vengeance and wrapped himself in a cloak of divine passion. My Lord. My Lord. He is not playing. He will. Somebody say will. Will. He will repay his enemies yeah, yeah, yeah. for their evil deeds. His fury will fall on his foes. He oh, will God. pay them back yeah, to the yeah. end of the earth. They, they can't run. <laughs> Whether well, they get locked up or not, they can't run from God. My Lord, in the West, people will respect the name of the Lord. And in the East, they will glorify him. For he will come like a raging blood tide, driven by the breath of the Lord. The Redeemer will come to Jerusalem to buy back those in Israel who have turned their back from sin. If you truly turned your back from sin, he said, I got you. Baby, you ain't got to worry. They might got to worry, but you ain't got to worry because you turned your back on sin. Woo! You pick a seat. Choose this day whom you will serve. You can't serve two masters. Your protection is in your salvation. It's not in your mask. It's not in your bulletproof vest. It's not living in a nice neighborhood or working at going to a good school. Your protection is turning from sin. Turning from your wicked ways. My God. Getting in the will of God. Stay in the will of God. Other than that, baby, you're going you to spend a whole lot of money trying to protect yourself. Lord. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He's stealing half your money because you try to protect your own self. Baby, I got a great protector. All you have to do is turn from your wicked ways. Turn, choose this day whom you will serve. We just, we just read about the whole state of the world and all the evil things that they're doing. When you truly are saying you are saved, think about Holy Ghost feel. You love God. You sold out to God. Why are you on that list? What is really going on? Why are you on that list? Your sin should not be piling up before God and testifying against you. You're supposed, he, said, he said, go and sin. No more. Your sins are forgiven. Come on. Hey. So if they still piling up, you have not stepped over and, and let him welcome you into the family. He said, daughter, your sins are forgiven. Go and sin. No more. Why do we miss that part? People keep saying you can't be sin free. Why do you say go and sin no more? Because the Holy Spirit, once it lives in you, it dwells in you, it begins to tell you, mm -mm. it's not that you won't have the thought. You'll have the, the thought of temptation, but temptation is only a thought. 
It's up to you to go forth. Go and sin no more. The Holy Spirit becomes your personal accountability partner. Ain't that so good, y'all? He's mm -hmm. like, mm -mm. he ain't gonna keep telling you though. He already told you once. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. You keep wanting to do it, knock yourself out. This is the blessed scripture and all of that good stuff. Verse 21, Isaiah 59 and 21. And this is my covenant with them. Those that have turned their back on sin. He said, this is my covenant with my children. That have turned from their wicked way. That have chosen a seat. My God. They no longer are, are back and forth. They have actually chosen a seat. They said, I'm going to serve one master. They said, for God I live and for God I die. Come on. Woo. Bless your name, God. He said, this is my covenant with them says the Lord, my spirit will not leave them. Yes? And neither will these words I have given you. They will be on your lips and the lips of your children and your children's children forever. I, the Lord, have spoken. I ain't gonna leave. I ain't gonna leave mine. I ain't gonna leave mine. <laughs> he said, I got mine. Yeah. My spirit is in them. My word is on their lips. Lips. They have put on that good old robe of righteousness. My God. They learned how to dress like they daddy. Come on. Ooh. It's so good. We are in the last days. We cannot be offended by the things that are going on. Just get in the wheel. Stay in the wheel. Do what God has called you to do. Let's go to 2 Timothy 3 and 1. 2 Timothy 3 and 1. You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times. We ain't even hit the very, very difficult yet. And we stressed out about Corona. Baby, I promise you if you are stressed out about Corona, you're not always in the wheel. It's just the truth. Yeah. Your faith ain't strong, Come on. Yeah. my Lord, because this ain't it. If this is shaking you, you got to get a firm, your, your foundation ain't too firm. You still too shaky. You still too wobbly. My God, a thousand mm -hmm. shall fall at my left. Ten thousand at my right. So how many, they, they count the bodies, ain't they counting the bodies? They count the bodies, right? So it's come, uh, but has it come near you? Has it come near you? Has it come? So it got, it got but the word got to be true. So there's 10,000 on this side of me. There's a thousand on this side of me. Come on. There's a thousand on this side of you. There's 10,000. That's why the, it's the word. Come on, help. Hey, God. Disobedient, 
to parents. It's in the book. Whoever said there's no God books to life, I don't know what book you read, but it ain't the Bible. They will be in the last days. They will be disobedient to parents. Why are we seeing all these youth dying? Mm. Honor thy mother yeah. Yeah. and thy father. I know we, it's easy to hold up a Black Lives Matter sign and blame it on the white men. Come on. They will be disobedient to their parents, and the devil loves disobedience because it gives them legal access to your life. Jesus. Honor thy mother uh, and thy father. My God, and thy days shall be longer on the face of the earth, and things will go well with you. The Lord told me this a little while back. He said, this is why it's so important. If you teach your children nothing else, teach them obedience. Amen. Because if you don't teach them to obey your voice, when it's time to obey my voice, he said they won't know how to obey. Mm -hmm. And the devil wants them to not obey because then he has legal access to destroy their life. Mm -hmm. If they can't learn math, teach them to obey. Mm -hmm. If they don't know French, teach them to obey. My God, help us. Children will be disobedient, disobeying their parents and ungrateful. Yeah. Is, is that happening, y'all? Because I think it's happening. Woo, they got a thousand toys and they still trying to figure what they're getting for Christmas and it's on the still Christmas day. What we get next? Ooh. Never satisfied. My Lord, they will consider nothing sacred. You know, it used to be a time you ride past the church, people would even turn that music down, or they wouldn't smoke on church grounds, or they wouldn't come in church dressed naked. Nothing's holy. Nothing is sacred anymore. Amen. We will be unloving and unforgiving. Mm, it's happening. That's what we're seeing. No love, no forgiveness. The devil loves it. He loves it. Because if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. My God. I know it's ugly. I know the videos. I know the heart. I, I get it. But if you don't forgive, mm -hmm. you won't be forgiven. They will slander others and have no self-control. Mm, mm, mm. No self-control. None. That's why we got 600 pound life. A whole show. A whole show. My Lord, lack of self-control. That's why addiction is so rampant. No self-control. Every addiction you can think of is so all of them. No self-control. It's in the Bible. How can you say it's not real? Who help us. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, and puffed up with pride. They will love pleasure rather than God. I know God told me to stop, but it just, I feel like it. Mm. They will love pleasure more than God. They will love pleasure more than God. But they still go to church. They will act religious. They will have the appearance of godliness. But they will reject the power that could actually make them godly. The Bible says, stay away from people like that. My gosh, it's in the book. They act in all this kind of ignorance. Stay away from people like that. See, I love the word of God because not only does it tell you where you're wrong, it tells you how to get right. Lord. So many people will tell you you're going to hell, but they don't tell you how. Well, what I'm supposed I mean, okay. Now, what can I do now? Let's go to Ezra 10. So, in Ezra, there were these priests, and the Lord told them, do not sleep with women of other cultures, other nationalities. 
Don't do it. I didn't want to, he said, don't do it. He didn't want them doing that. Because he said he didn't want them introducing them to pagan gods and all of these things. Because when you lay with somebody, two become one flesh. So he didn't want them being introduced to things that were ungodly, that were not of his nature. So they realized that they had done this. They had been brought to their attention. And now they're handling it. They are going forth to repent and to divorce their wives, actually, is what they were doing. Verse 13 says, well, I'll read 12. Verse 12 says, then the whole assembly, all of them together, they all these people that were ready to repent, they all came together. They all realized we were doing wrong and we need to turn. The whole assembly raised their voice and answered, yes, you are right. We must do as you say. So they actually realized the person that was telling them you're doing wrong, okay, we, we acknowledge that you're doing wrong. We acknowledge that we're doing wrong. And we need to obey what you're saying because you came to point it out. Nobody else pointed it out. They just been letting you go down the wrong road. And they said, my wife was pretty. Help us, God. Yes, you are right. We must do as you say. Then they added, this isn't something that can be done in a day or two. For many of us are involved in this extremely sinful affair. It's not going to turn around in one day. It's not. The whole world is not going to matter. It's still going to get worse. But it's not going to turn around. This situation is not going to turn around in one day. But it starts with repentance. We realize we're doing wrong. There's so many things I got going on in my past, in my present, active, in my closet, out of the closet, and under the bed. I can't do it all in one day. But I acknowledge that it's not right. I acknowledge that I got to do something different. Some deliverance is instant. The Lord can touch you and the whole taste bud be knocked out. One of my clients, she just blessed me so good. I can't remember her, how long she was on drugs. But she said she was on drugs for all these years. She went to a church service one day. She said that she went up and they laid hands on her. She said she was slain in the spirit for four hours. The church had to, they let one lady stay and they locked up the rest of the church. She said, when I get up, ha! Yeah. 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 She said, when I get up, I just knew something was different. Mm. She said, you know, I never had a craving. Never had to go to AA, NA, LMNOP, come on in the room. See, that's what the church is supposed to be. It's a place of deliverance. But it's too busy. We're too busy being a fashion show. It's a place of deliverance. Most churches ain't about to let you stand there because they're like, listen, we got to go. You know, we're going to have to get up, get her up. And, uh, you know, she can go to a car on the parking lot, but uh, we're going to have to, you know, because Deacon Jones got the suite. So. <laughs> Help us! Some people's deliverance is instant. But then the Bible says the leper, he said they, as they went, as they walked, as they went forward, as they kept going on. But it was forward though. Because see, the process is still moving forward. It's not stagnant. Standing here, I've been here 37 years and I'm still saying, the Lord is working on me. He's working on me. Come on. He's working on me. I'm still right. No, you're not moving. You got to keep on trucking. Come on. You got to keep moving forward. As they went, they were healed. I don't even know all this church stuff. I don't know what you're supposed to wear. I don't know church language. I don't know when the people say the same thing that the speaker said because they know the scriptures and all of that stuff. But as they went, yeah. they were healed. My God. My God daughter, she said the other day, and it blessed me so good. She said, you know, when I was doing what I wasn't supposed to be doing, she said, one thing I did make sure I did. I, I did do. She said, I kept showing up. Come on. She said, I kept showing up. I kept showing up. I kept showing up. She said, when your name would pop on the phone, even if I was not doing the right thing, I kept answering. Come on in the room. When you gave me an assignment, I kept doing it. My God, I kept coming to Makeover Ministry. When I couldn't come to Makeover Ministry, I made sure I caught it online. My God, you just got to keep. You just got to keep. Come on. You just get your fall down. Come on. Get up. Dust yourself up. I got to keep. Come on. You got to keep going. We can't keep stopping and start. Keep going. Keep going. Keep, as you go, the oil is being produced. As you keep resisting the devil by 
the way you live. Yeah, exactly. See, if you're in here on Friday night, yes, is anybody in here fornicating right now? Raise your hand. Nobody? Nobody. Can't Jesus. When you stay in the presence of God, oh. you ain't doing the wrong thing. <laughs> you're not. Nobody, everybody here is just listening, participating in the presence of God, learning, feasting on the word of God. It's the, it's the antidote. You done got the antidote. Man of God, you done got the antidote. <laughs> Woo, bless God. It's the antidote. That's how I got delivered. Nobody laid hands on me. I submitted myself to this word. I was in my Bible 14 hours a day sometimes. I was listening to sermons. I stopped watching TV. When I realized I was going to hell. Come on. Worth it. It's not. Come on. The antidote is keep. Just keep. Keep pressing to the things of God. Keep seeking the things of God. Cut out all the world. Just I don't have time. I know they're going to talk about me. Girl, I can't wear it. Honey, if you want to go to hell, go by yourself. I can't go. I got to go on to up yonder. It's time to really get saved, people of God. Time to really get saved. Because God is doing something in this season and he really don't want to do it without you. Hey. He wants to do it with you. You don't want him to do you like Jonah. Because if he's put a word in your belly, he's put a song in your throat, if he did whatever he does, it's going to come to pass because he's God. So if you, if you still want to keep drinking your whole life, but he's called you to be a preacher, when you get drunk, you're going to preach. Come on in the room. Come on. You're still going to do it. It's still going to come out. You, you know, Jonah did not want to preach. He didn't want to do it. He went to Nineveh. The Lord redirected him. I mean, the Lord redirected him to Nineveh because he didn't want to go. The Lord redirected him. He got there. He had a whole attitude the whole time. Oh, Lord. How you got a whole attitude and you was being rebellious and you don't want the Lord to spread their light and he spread your light? Yeah. At the end of Jonah, the Lord stopped talking to him. Yeah. I'm done. Hey, if you read it, the Lord stopped talking to Jonah. My God. He stopped talking. But the thing that I love about Jonah, one man, one man, through one man who was not submitted, 120,000 people were saved. That is so dope. Yep. 120,000 people were saved and he wasn't even submitted to God. What can he do? What can God do with your submitted gifts? Yes. 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 I love that. That is so amazing. 120 people, 120,000 people were saved with the words that Jonah spoke when the Lord was speaking through him. That's so amazing. As we continue, we're going to wrap it on up. We're going to go to John 13. This will be our last scripture. John 13. Once we've really made it up in our mind that we're going to choose, we're going to choose God. With accepting him in our heart as our personal Lord and Savior, we ain't got no long prayer tonight, y'all. It's simply yes. That's it. That's all we got. Yes, God, I surrender. Yes, God, I surrender. Because my soul is important. Yeah. My God. The generation that's looking up to me, they important. The lives that are looking at me, the call upon my life, you are important to me, God. The way you look down and you see me, God. It's important. After we've committed our life to the Lord, we got to get washed. Because if you keep finding yourself going back, come on back to the washing machine. We gotta, we gotta get washed. Jesus was washing the disciples' feet. Um, we're gonna start at verse six. 
John 13 and 6. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested. You will never wash my feet. No matter of fact, he said, you will never, ever wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you don't even belong to me. <laughs> unless I wash you, you don't even belong to me. My God. Unless I wash you, you don't belong. Because he's washing feet because that's all the places you've traveled. Jeez. All the places that you have been, your feet have gotten dirty. And he's purifying your life. And he don't want your dirty feet to walk on your new white carpet. He wants to wash you. He said, if you don't get washed, you don't even belong to me. My Lord. God is so faithful. And his word is so strategic. We got to be washed. We don't, have, we don't even have time to be worrying about somebody else in this season. Come on. Baby, if you ain't washed, I, 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 I can't. You know, I hate that. I'm sorry. Definitely my condolences. But I, I got to get washed in this season. This is the season that I have to get washed. When I'm washed and I'm thoroughly clean and I'm Holy Ghost filled, come on in the room. Now I can help you. But I can't help you because I'm still dirty. I still got residue. So when I come to help you with this situation that you have going on, my dirty feet are going to get in the way. I don't have a godly solution for you. It might be kind of godly, but it ain't going to be righteous. I don't have on my righteous robe. He's trying to change your clothes in this season. Yes. And the Lord has prepared a personal altar tonight. <laughs> So you can get washed. For real. So you can get washed. So you can get washed. Lord, we thank you tonight, oh great God. We bless your name, oh holy God that you are. God, we said yes to your will, yes, to your way, oh great God. We welcomed you in our heart as our personal Lord and Savior, Lord. We surrender to you tonight. We want to be washed. We want to be cleansed tonight, oh great God. Purify our hands. Purify our hearts our motives, and our intention. God, we thank you for this time that you have cut out, Lord, that you have ordained this night yes, God. to purify me, God, to sanitize me, God, to wash me. Wash me whiter than snow tonight, oh great God. Lord, if you don't do it, I can't do it by myself. Ooh, we have tried time and time again filling our way. My Lord, we filling our way, God. We're searching for you, God, in all the wrong places. Because we haven't been washed. We've been to church, but we, we haven't been washed, God. We allow you to wash us sometimes, but then we go back, God. We turn back, and we return to our own vomit. We repent tonight, God. 
returning back to the place you have called us from many, many, many times. You have spared us many, many, many times, God. You have protected us many, many times, God. You have kept us from danger seen and unseen, God. You have not let evil consume us when we put ourselves in those positions, God. We call you the great protector, God. We thank you, Lord, that you are a keeper, that you are a sustaining God, keeping us when we didn't even know we needed to be kept, God. Keeping us when we didn't even want to be kept, God. Whew. You are truly the good Father. We come tonight, oh Lord, believing that there is nothing too hard for you. Nothing is out of your reach. Nothing is beyond you, oh great God. Even that thing that's on our mind right now. Lord, tonight we accept your perfect love. We accept your perfect love. We accept your perfect love, God. When we truly understand that your love is perfect and it is full of everything that we need. We don't have to turn astray. We don't have to go back and return to our old ways, God. We're calling on your transformation power in this season, Lord. On tonight, God, transform us. If that is your prayer, lift up your hands tonight. Hey, God. If that is your prayer, lift up your hands. God is sanitizing in this atmosphere. Who bless your name, oh holy God, that you are God. Hey, God. Ooh, thank you, Lord. For you are holy. You are righteous, oh God. Bless you, oh God. Lord, we thank you that you're washing us. Whiter than snow. You're better than Clorox. My God. When you do it, God, we'll never be the same. Yes, we want to belong to you. Wash us. We want to belong to you, God. We thank you for your blood tonight. Thank you, Jesus. We honor you on tonight, Lord. We want to honor you with more than our lips. We want to honor you with our lifestyle, with our hearts. Oh, Jesus. We see the state of the world, God. Hey, God. People are losing their lives every day, Lord. We don't want to be afraid to go where you tell us to go, God. We don't want to be afraid to do what you tell us to do, God. We will not preserve our own life, God. Send us and we will go. When our hands are clean and our heart is clean, our thoughts are clean, we can hear you clearly, God. We can hear your instruction, God. And you will keep us safe. You will send us to dark places. But your word will be with us. Your spirit will be with us. And we will obey. And when it is our time to go, God, it will be well with our soul. Because eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men. The things that you have prepared for us, God, on the other side of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
May you give us our assignment on tonight, God. Oh, bless your name, God. Give us our assignment, oh God. We want to be faithful. Speak to us, through us, and for us, Lord. Without a vision, the people perish. Show us what you have for us, where you have for us to go, God. Give us a glimpse of where we're supposed to be moving towards. So many people are not moving forward because they don't know what's ahead. They don't know what they're getting to, what's next, what's on the other side of this. But when you show us a glimpse, it gives us something to press for. God, we thank you. We honor you. You're so holy. You're so amazing. You're so wonderful. Oh, you are the good father. Lord, we love you all tonight, God. We call you perfect. We call you beautiful. We call you holy. We thank you for this word tonight, God. We thank you for your peace that settled in this place. And that we, we will never be the same when we cross that threshold, God. And that your glory will continue to dwell in this place. And that no life can come across that threshold and leave the same. We decree and declare that we have been washed. That our taste buds have been washed. That our intentions have been washed. That our motives have been washed, that our desires have been washed, the things that we enjoy, they've been washed on tonight, God, and that our hands are clean, and that our sins are forgiven. We will go and sin no more. Oh, thank you, Lord, that you call us daughters. And you call us son. You claim us. And you send us with the command, go and send no more. We thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Mama, you say, um, change me, oh God. Change me, oh God. Make me more like you. Yes.
Um, let me just you want to come and tell everybody goodbye because you think it's a it's the little man of God. He's the junior pastor. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Uh, Amen. Amen.